massive tears are the most difficult kind of rotator cuff lesions to treat due to tendon degeneration and retraction too. These cases get a little worse when these tears are so chronic, like in this case. So this case is about a 59 years old woman who had a felt on the sidewalk when she was walking on the street about five years ago and she developed a traumatic rotator cuff lesion in her right shoulder. Unfortunately, due to, due to insurance plan problems, she was supposed to be operated three times in the last five years, but she was not. She came to me about six months ago, so I asked for a new MRI. This is a, a, a recent MRI, a coronal view in T2, revealing a massive and retracted lesion of the posterior superior cuff. And here, in this other image, we can see another coronal view, still in T2, in which we can see that she had a, v, a, a very retracted lesion of the supra and probably the infraspinatus too. She was operated in November 9, 2011, and so this is her arthroscopy. So, this is the right shoulder, you will see the biceps and we establish an anterior portal and then we immediately tested the biceps. We just put it out of the biceps pulley and the biceps was quite ugly with a lot of synovitis and fraying and definitely that biceps would have to be tenotomized and if possible even tenodized. So we, we performed a very simple and fast anatomy and then we performed a very simple debridement of the biceps anchor and we then immediately move it to the subacromial space. So then we had to remove all the bursitis and all the synovitis and now we are cleaning the anterior lateral gutter. As I always say, this is a very important part of the surgery and now we are cleaning the anterior gutter and now we can see that she had a very big lesion. Here we can see the biceps and a very big lesion of the, the posterior superior cuff. So then we continuing cleaning the lateral gutter. This is a very part, important part of the surgery. And after that we immediately move the, the camera to the, the lateral portal. So this is her lesion, a very important lesion. And then we, we establish it immediately and enter supralateral portal with a spinal needle and, and then we immediately assess it, the tendon mobility. So the tendon was not quite, not very mo mobile. Here we have seen the mobility of the posterior part of the tendon. So we would have for sure to, to perform some releases and then using a soft tissue sh shaver and electrocautery, we performed some releases in the distal part of the clavicle and the, in the posterior part of the subacromial space as we are seeing now. Then we enter it for the, the enter superlateral port with a very small oste osteotome and we debrided all the, the adherences between the superior part of the glenoid and the posterior superior cuff as an assistance very gently holded the cuff. Now we are reassessing mobility. The tendon was reasonably mobile, so we continued doing a lot of releases, still working for the anterior supralateral portal. And at that moment, we first started to see where we would put the first anchor. So before putting the first anchor, we would have to, to perform a, a very good debridement of the greater tuberosity in order to create a bony bed, a bleeding base in which the tendon would, would be put and compress it too. So then we established it with a spinal needle a good position for the first anchor and then we put that first anchor in a very standard fashion using first a probe and then we, we made the format of the anchor and then we would have to put a 5.0 I mean a, a 6.0 double loaded absorbable anchor. So then the, the, the anchor was 
place it was really in a in a good position so we first enter it with a bird beak for the, for the, the posterior portal and in a retrograde fashion we would put the first white suture out of the shoulder for the posterior portal and then before tying that knot we enter it for the, the lateral portal with a special device and pass it the second suture in the very posterior part of the cuff and then we would have to put that suture out of the, the shoulder with a suture grasper for the anterior portal. We can see that the camera now is in the anterior superlateral portal and for the lateral portal we tie the first knot, a sliding Duncan knot and, and we have to put a lot of compression in order for the tendon to heal in the bony bed that we had just created. Then we cut that knot and put the two blue the blue sutures out of the lateral portal and tie in the second knot. A slide and then knot again, put in a lot of tendon, a lot of, of pressure in the tendon, and then once the knot was done, it would just have to be cut. At that moment, we, we would uh, uh, have to put a second anchor and we establish at that position using a spinal needle. We can see that the camera is in the anterior superlateral portal. And then we did the same thing again. We passed a probe, and then when the hole was done, we would have just to, to make the right space for the anchor, and then we would have to put the second anchor again, a double loaded anchor. At that moment, we changed the portal, so now the camera is in the lateral port is, is in the posterior portal, and then we would have to isolate the suture so uh, we we put the white one in the lateral portal and then using an express seal device we pass it the first suture from the second anchor in the junction between the supra and the infraspinatus and we would have to put that suture out of the shoulder through the, the enter superlateral portal and then we would have to put both both parts of the suture in the lateral portal to tie the first suture from the second anchor. So now we are doing an, an, another suture and a sliding then knot again and, and once the knot was tied it would just have to be cut but we always have to put some pressure in order for the tendon to heal in the bony bed that we had just created and then the knot was cut. Here we see that the knot has been cut and then we will have to do the same thing. So we put again, again the blue sutures in the lateral portal and using an express seal device, we pass it that blue suture in a more anterior part of the supraspinatus and again with a suture grasper through the anterior superlateral portal, we pull it that suture out of the shoulder. So once that's, that suture was out of the shoulder, we would have to do the same thing again, put both parts of the blue suture in the lateral cannula and tie the second knot from the second anchor. Now we are putting some, some pressure again, and once the knot was done, it would have to be cut. And then, using a spinal needle, we establish a good position for the third anchor that would be very anterior, in the, in the very anterior part of the greater tuberosity. So then we, we did the same steps. We, we used the puncture and, and very hopefully that lady had a, a good bone quality and then the anchor would have to be put in the same manner. We used the third anchor, again a 6.0 absorbable double loaded anchor and when the anchor was in, in place we would have to isolate the sutures not to make a mess with them so we put the blue one in the enter superlateral portal and the white one in the lateral portal. It's very important to isolate sutures not to make a mess with them inside of the subacromial space and then we pass it the blue one in a very anterior part of the greater of this the supraspinatus I mean 
And then as we were in, the, in, in a very anterior part of the subacromial space, we put that suture out of the shoulder through the anterior portal. So now we are putting the blue one out of the anterior portal. And then we isolated them in the anterior superlateral portal. And then before tying the, the knot, we pass it through the lateral portal, the white one again in a very anterior part of the supraspinatus. We put that suture out of the anterior portal and again isolated both parts of the white suture in the lateral portal. And then we would have to tie both knots. So we, we tied first the white one, again in the same manner, some compression and then the knot would have to be cut. And then we, we tied the blue suture of the third anchor. We tied that knot through the anterior superlateral portal. We can see that we always put a, a lot of pressure because we want the tendon to heal in the bony bed. And then before cutting that knot, we would do a sub acromial soft tissue tenor daisy. So we pass it a spinal needle through the biceps with a proline suture and we put that proline suture out of the shoulder through the anterior superlateral cannula and then we pass it the blue suture through the biceps and made a soft tissue tenodesis. So this is the final image, the, the final result. We, we can see that we could reestablish a, a very reasonable foot print as we externally and internally rotate the shoulder. We can see that here in, in, in the lateral view, we can see the infraspinatus and then the supraspinatus and in the very anterior part of the subacromial space, the soft tissue tenodesis. And at that moment, the surgery was finished.